radically modified to look snazzier and drive faster. Some amateur mechanics tinker away at building one in their garage, while other car buffs custom order one from a specialty auto shop. Either way, hot rod lovers are driven by their passion for these mean machines. Hot rods are customized inside and out. The classic cars they start out as are pretty scarce these days, so specialty shops now design and build hot rod bodies from scratch using state-of-the-art technologies. It all starts with curved steel rails 15 feet long that form the basis of the chassis. Every 12 inches, workers weld the rails to the car's frame. Next, they position cross members to reinforce the frame. With utmost concern for quality control, they'll assemble and install by hand the transmission, the suspension, and the shock absorbers. And weld those precisely aligned cross members to the curved rails. Elsewhere, someone polishes the stainless steel wings, which have been laser cut. These wings make up the hot rod signature front grille. Mounting the disc brakes onto such a high-end machine takes specialists. First, they screw the spindles to the suspension arm. Then, grease the ball bearing mechanism. And finally, block the disc brake with a cotter pin to fasten the pieces together. The brake system has four calipers, one per wheel. Each one holds two brackets called the brake shoes. They close down on the brake disc to slow down and stop the wheel's rotation. A couple of slide pins lock the caliper into place. Brake shoes are prone to wear, so their alignment and oiling must be perfect. Time has come to install a hydraulic device that reacts to the steering wheel's movement, directing the tie rods to turn the front wheels accordingly. A pneumatic tool is used to affix the pinion of the steering mechanism. At every step, workers check and double check each part. Using a jack, they lift the differential housing into position. It anchors the rear wheel's propulsion system to the car's frame. They attach the suspension arms to the axles at an angle. Meanwhile, a painter sprays a coat of resin gel onto the plastic molds with which they make the car's fiberglass body parts. The gel coating eases extraction and gives the fiberglass a high gloss finish. To mold the parts, a worker spreads resin on fiberglass cloth. They call this step, wetting the fiberglass mat. They lay the map on the mold, in this case on a door mold. Then, with a the roller, carefully press out all the air bubbles. It takes about 40 minutes for the resin impregnated mat to solidify. Extracting the body part is a tricky procedure. They hammer wood wedges in between the hardened fiberglass and the mold. It's crucial to angle the wedge just right, otherwise the mold may collapse. It typically takes about 25 molded parts to make up a complete hot rod body. After three weeks work, final assembly begins. After the back panels comes the front, otherwise known as the nose. Next come the fenders, then the stylus running board, and no hot rod is complete without its signature grill. The windshield frame helps support the roof or Carson top and hot rod lingo. The front hood completes this 37 Ford inspired body. It ships out without a paint job. That's because customization is everything in the hot rod biz. The buyer decides how to finish the car by choosing, for example, this retro dashboard designed to blend spectacularly with the rest of the car. Even car junkies can be forgiven for struggling to keep up to speed with the ever-growing customization options out there. From the engine, to the rims, to the seats, to the chrome. When it comes to customizing your hot rod, you're in the driver's seat.